With hundreds of potential COVID-19 vaccines in development and a handful on the horizon, uh, this is what is happening. Many companies are optimistic about having the jab ready by the beginning of May next year, but testing vaccine candidates as far as their safety is concerned is only the first step. The next part may prove to be a much bigger challenge. What is that? Well, distributing the vaccine and also determining who needs it most. And I'm going to suggest that it could become an ethical and a moral conundrum. Here now is Professor Barry Schub, a virologist, founding director at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. Professor Schub, good afternoon to you. Um, how close are we then, do you think, to a vaccine and how bitter might that fight for distribution actually become? Yeah, you know, as you mentioned, they're saying like 248 candidate vaccines being evaluated at the moment. The majority of them, of course, in the laboratory, uh, but there are 14, so 49 which are on, in clinical trials and 10 of them are in the advanced clinical trials, what you call the phase three, the last of the clinical trials. So these clinical trials normally would take quite a few months. Uh, so we could expect that there would be some vaccine which would be a, uh, available for licensing probably at the end of the year, beginning of next year. But that, of course, only, as you say, the, only the beginning. Uh, each vaccine uh, will have to go to, uh, through the respective country's regulatory authority. In, in the case of South Africa, it's called SAPRA, the South African Health, uh, Health Products um, Authority. And they would need to kind of assess the vaccine for both efficacy and, importantly, for safety. So it's still quite a few steps which have to be have to be taken before the vaccine becomes generally available. And that's probably only going to be probably the middle towards the latter part of next year. Let's look ahead, though. At some point, we're going to talk about uh, distribution and, I guess, who gets priority. There is an initiative called COVAX. It's run by a vaccine alliance, and it aims to ensure equitable access to the COVID uh, vaccine. The question is, um, I guess it's a two-part question. One is, what is our role in COVAX and how is priority decided? Okay, there's two, two actually separate questions. Uh, COVAX um, is an initiative which was launched by the, by the World, uh, World Health Organization and its allied um, organizations. Gavi, which is the Global Alliance for Vaccine Initiative, CEPI, which is a coalition for epidemic preparedness, and the WHO itself. And the idea was really to kind of have a facility of pooled procurement uh, of vaccine. And that's to enable the middle income countries to, and also low income countries, of course, to have access to vaccine. And COVAX originated because the high income countries, the Western countries, were in fact gobbling up all the vaccine. Now, some two billion doses of vaccine had already been pre-ordered by countries such as the United Kingdom, United States, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, there was a worry that other countries might be left behind. So they set up this facility to, as a pool procurement, in other words, to have a large mass of countries. And this actually represents about 70% of the world's population um, to have access to vaccines equitably, and not only to the high income countries, but also to middle and low income countries. South Africa has um, an initially kind of approached COVAX, of course, uh, and uh, given us an intention uh, to, uh, to purchase vaccine through the COVAX facility. Of course, it doesn't exclude uh, also negotiating directly with manufacturers, but it is also one of the avenues which is being used by, the, by South Africa to get vaccine into this country. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the answer to the first question. With regard to the distribution, the hierarchy of the priority groups, yes, as you said, that is a difficult question. And there are some general um, international kind of guidelines. I think it's generally accepted that, for example, frontline healthcare workers would be in high priority. Uh, elderly people, particularly those in care homes, would be another high priority. People with uh, significant, I say significant, comorbidities would be a priority. But how to juggle all of these, I think healthcare workers will probably be, uh, frontline healthcare workers will be kind of high up on the priority list. But then of course we'll have to kind of juggle all the rest because initially it's only gonna be a relatively small amount of vaccine available for distribution. And then of course we'll have to be prioritized in terms of its need.
I get concerned, Professor, when you use the word juggle, and I'll tell you why. Does that not open the avenue for a black market, for corruption familiar to many people in this country? Could this become like a version of the Hunger Games? Well, I suppose to really give what you're saying is a possibility. I think in this case there are a lot of checks and balances. Uh, and I don't think that the uh, ability or facility or availability for corruption is going to be that great. I think there are many ways, uh, there are many kind of, as I say, checks and balances to try to, uh, to, in other words, those hierarchy of the priority groups are going to be very well published, very well studied. Um, you know, the Ministerial Advisory Committee of Vaccines, which, which as you know, I had, uh, part of it, in fact, part of the work stream uh, is to, in fact, engage a number of stakeholders, many stakeholders, to kind of look at the various kind of um, issues which go into the prioritizing of health of, um, of, of the uh, vaccine distribution. So I think there are a number of stakeholders inputting into that. And I think that it'll be fairly kind of rigid and fairly kind of formal, those groups who will be prioritized for vaccine requirements. Thank you very much for joining us, Professor Barry Shub.